Hi there, Waltoners. I'm Jack, and this is DSY Newscast. And today, I want to talk about Disney's upcoming animated movies. As just in case you haven't heard about it, basically, the situation is that Disney has six new animated movies that are going to be coming out over the next three years. And out of these six animated movies, Five of them are going to be sequels, with Inside Out 2 and Moana 2 coming out this year in 2024, Zootopia 2 is going to come out next year in 2025, and then in 2026 we're going to be getting Toy Story 5 and Frozen 3, and there's even a possibility that they'll make a Frozen 4 as well. And look, it's clear to see the reason why Disney's doing this with a whole sequel strategy, as recently their box office results have been disappointing to say the least. You know, they went from 29 19 being the undisputed kings of the box office, you know, dominating Hollywood and making billions of dollars doing so, to now struggling to pull in those same kind of numbers as they once did before. But I do think there's something bigger at play here which isn't just relating to Disney, but if we actually look at the whole entire, you know, wider animated movie landscape from 2022 and 2023, overall the box office results were relatively weaker across the board, which does seem to indicate that the family movie going audience just hasn't returned to movie theaters post pandemic the same way that other demographics have. But there does seem to be a pretty big exception to this rule that manages to get these families to go to the movie theaters. And that is if the movie is part of a massive franchise or as a sequel. As the highest grossing animated movies for 2022 and 2023 were Minions 2 Rise of Gru, which made nearly a billion dollars, and then for 2023 it was the Super Mario Brothers movie, which made 1.3 billion dollars. And even the second highest grossing movies were sequels as well. And also what adds further weight to this whole idea that sequels have some sort of special magical pulling power to get the uh, families back into the movie theaters is the fact that Universal not only have a top grossing animated movie in 2023 with Mario, but also had the worst performing animated movie in 2023 with Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken, and that just so happened to be a standalone original animated movie. And so this does seem to be a problem that's going to be plaguing the entire animation industry, that sequels versus originals tend to make more money, and they're going to have to balance this one. And I spoke about last year in a video, which I'll link to down below, but this kind of sequel fatigue might just set in in the future as these studios continue to bleed these franchises dry. But in terms of Disney, it really can't be highlighted enough just how much they are betting on these sequels. You know, so much is going to be riding on the box office return on these sequels to hopefully restore some box office magic to Disney. And so what I want to do now, it might be a bit foolish to do this, but I want to dive into the numbers, dive into the data, and hopefully predict some sort of return for these movies based upon a whole number of factors at play that might also affect them. And so the first sequel out the gate is Inside Out 2. And a lot's going to be riding on this to set the tone for the rest of the sequels that Disney has coming out. And, uh, you know, this is coming out on June 14th, 2024. And what we know so far about the synopsis is that it's going to be dealing with a teenage Riley and the headquarters is being demolished to make room for new emotions that will join joy, sadness, anger, fear and disgust as anxiety embarrassment, envy, and anew will show up and help guide Riley through her teenage years. And straight away, I'm going to make the prediction that I reckon this has a good chance of making close to a billion dollars at the worldwide box office. And the reason for that is not only was it the most watched animated movie trailer that Disney's ever released, which is a very positive sign, and that bodes well for a lot of people coming out and wanting to see the sequel to this movie. But the other thing that we've got to take into account here is that Despicable Me 4 is going to be coming out two weeks after Inside Out 2 is released. And that is going to eat into the worldwide box office of uh, Inside Out 2, as it's only had two weeks where the audiences will only go and see that before they have to start competing with Despicable Me 4, which is also another massive franchise which has proven itself in recent years to make nearly a billion dollars. So 
that's going to play into it as well. These two are going to be vying it out all summer for the top spot in terms of animated movies at the box office. And then the other thing that could play a factor here is that obviously this is dealing with a teenage Riley and they've already made reference to puberty in the past already in the movie. And so depending on how that's handled from a storytelling perspective, there's always going to be some people who are going to try and find something at the moment to have a go at Disney about and uh, Pixar about as well and turn it into a culture war. So that could also negatively affect it depending on how it's handled in terms of a storytelling perspective. But obviously that's just an external factor that we've got to keep in mind here. The overall box office predictions here, I've put adjusted for 2024 inflation just so we can get a proper comparison between the two. And I think the domestic box office will do roughly the same, maybe 350 to maybe $400 million at the domestic box office. It's a hard one to predict this one because Pixar movies haven't done the best domestically recently, but they've done better overseas internationally. And so I reckon it will make around $600 million internationally, and that will help boost it to nearly a billion dollars at the worldwide box office. But then we come to Disney's Moana 2 that was only just recently announced. And this is going to be coming out on November 27th, 2024 around Thanksgiving. And the very basic synopsis we have here is that Moana receives an unexpected call from her wayfinding ancestors, which will send her on another dangerous adventure into Oceana like she's never faced before. And this is going to see Auli Cavallio reprise her role as Moana and The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, to return as the voice of Maui. Now, the major thing to consider here about Moana 2 is that the popularity of Moana, it was released in 2016 and eight years later, it has only grown in popularity over that period of time. It, it still remains incredibly popular. And that's in part because Moana doesn't just appeal to young girls, it also appeals to young boys as well with Maui. And so it plays for both demographics to come and see this animated movie. And I think that's a major factor behind its popularity. And then this is also backed up by the fact that Nielsen's uh, top streamed movie for all of 2023, not just animated movies, but of all movies streamed on all streaming platforms, Moana was number one which is a huge factor at play here, which I think is a groundswell of support behind Moana 2, making a ton of money. But the very important thing here is whether it will have legs in terms of the reviews of the movie and whether it will have rewatchability. And that's what these animated movies need to have. And we know that it started life as a Disney Plus series, that they've now looked upon the story and said, no, this could be a feature length animated movie. And so they've moved towards doing that. Now, if the story is strong enough and it gets reviewed just as well, you know, by all the critics, it gets a good Rotten Tomatoes score, a good audience score, and it's very well reviewed, then the legs behind this thing could really take it well over a billion dollars, I reckon. And that's a big prediction considering that Moana, the original movie in 2016, made $643 million at the worldwide box office. I think the other thing at play here is that not only is it released in Thanksgiving, which we've got to consider because Thanksgiving release dates for the past few years for Disney haven't been very kind to Disney's animated movies. You know, it's been relatively weak. But also, it's opening the same exact weekend, the same exact day as Wicked, the Wicked musical, is being released. And this could either have a really good effect or a really bad effect on Moana 2, depending on how well it's received and reviewed and received by audiences. And maybe there could be some sort of Barbenheimer effect, considering that Moana 2 is a musical, Wicked is a musical, they're very different, you know, one's animated, one's live action. But if there's kind of a Barbenheimer effect, you know, from Barbie and Oppenheimer, and the two get joined together, considering they're coming out on the same day, and there's some sort of, I don't know, a uh, 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 Wikiwana effect kind of happen, where, like, people want to go see both movies in a back-to-back -back showing, then it could bode really well for not only Wicked, but also Moana 2 as well. And I think this could be really good for Disney to have this massive success. And personally... I think it bodes well for the parks as well, because I think we're going to see more Moana in the parks if Moana 2 does really well at the box office. And then we come to the next thing, which is the only original movie 
out of all of these movies that are going to be coming out over the next three years and it's Pixar's Elio. Now this was originally meant to be released this year but it was pushed back to 2025 and the synopsis for this is that Elio is an underdog with an active imagination that finds himself inadvertently beamed up to the Com universe, an interplanetary organization which represents galaxies far and wide and is mistakenly identified as Earth's ambassador to the rest of the universe. Now the reason why this movie is so critical is that if Inside Out 2 and Moana 2 do really well and Elio doesn't do well, then this is going to give a very clear signal to Disney that original movies and original stories massively underperform and they should move more in the direction of doing more franchise sequel movies in the future. But the glimmer of hope here is if Inside Out 2 does really well and makes nearly a billion dollars at the box office, then that goodwill and support behind Pixar from Inside Out 2 off the back of, you know, Elemental didn't do that badly in the end, made half a billion dollars at the worldwide box office, uh, that will also play into it. If they can keep that momentum going into Elio, and Elio is a good movie that's reviewed well and audiences like it, then I don't think it will do major numbers, but I think it might do, you know, half a billion dollars of a worldwide box office, maybe a bit more, maybe $600 million of a worldwide box office, something respectable like that. And so Elio's box office is going to be very, very important to see where Disney goes in the future. But then speaking of that, later on in 2025, we're going to get Zootopia 2. We don't really have a synopsis for this. It's just going to be more of the same, you know, Nick and Judy are now partners at the ZPD, the Zootopia Police Department, and they're probably going to try and solve a mystery. And this movie's coming out on November 26th, 2025, you know, around Thanksgiving again. And the original movie was incredibly popular. It's really had a lasting effect and people have been wanting this sequel for a long time. And that is something to factor into the domestic and international box offices. But I've put the China box office here in the results for a very particular reason. And that is because China accounted for nearly a quarter of the overall worldwide box office of Zootopia in 2016. This is the big what if around Zootopia 2. We don't know how it's going to play in China considering that the box office for movies in China haven't performed nearly as well during the pandemic or since the pandemic in China for animated movies. You know, the top grossing animated movie in China since the pandemic was Pixar's Soul, which made $58 million. But then again, that was unopposed. And then the next highest grossing animated movie was Minions 2 Rise of Gru, which made around $35 million, which is far away from the $236 million that Zootopia made. And so it's hard to know if a Zootopia was a rarity that won't be repeated again with Zootopia 2 or whether it will be. So for that reason, I'm going to be slightly more optimistic and say it might make $100 million in China, but we don't know how it's going to play, how wide the circulation for Zootopia is going to be in China, even though it is very popular. You know, Zootopia Land was just built and opened at Shanghai Disneyland, so we don't know how that will play. And then the other thing to say here is that you know, Zootopia came out in March of 2016 and America in 2016 is a very different place from what America is in 2024. There's been a global pandemic in the middle, a lot of things have changed and the world's different basically. And when Zootopia came out, it was a, you know, an allegory about racism and it did social commentary. And if that social commentary continues as a trend in Zootopia 2, which it most likely will, it all depends on how that's received. You know, it might be received really well, people might get behind it and it'll be a big positive for the movie, or it might become a culture war issue. And depending on how that plays out domestically, internationally, and the social commentary that's played out in the movie, it might lead to a positive or negative effect on the box office for Zootopia 2, along with how it performs in China and whether it gets a wide release in China as well. So a lot of factors at play around Zootopia 2's box office, and it's very hard to actually predict this one, but I'm going to lean in and say it might make close to a billion dollars if everything lines up properly. Then we come to Toy Story 5 and Frozen 3, and I think these are the easiest ones to predict by far. I think Toy Story 5... Building off Toy Story 4, it was well received. There was, you know, very little diminishing return from Toy Story 3 to Toy Story 4. It held 
strong fairly well from the inflationary standpoint of adjusted for inflation you see that worldwide box office there there's a there's a minor drop but not too much i think toy story 5 will easily make over a billion dollars and even adjusted for inflation it will still seem fairly good and be over a billion dollars and then frozen 3 easily over a billion dollars i think this is one of these ones even when adjusted for inflation frozen 2 made more money than frozen 1 so that bodes very well for Frozen 3 and I think if they can make another compelling story which has legs and can even arc over two movies then yes I think this will make easily a lot of money for Disney but anyways now we've reached the end of all of those movies over the next three years it's over to you the Walton is as I want to know what are your thoughts and opinions on all of this which movie do you think will make the most money? Give your predictions for how much you reckon each one of these movies will make. And we can even come back later on this year and see how much Inside Out 2 and Moana 2 made. You know, I think it's an interesting topic and I want to hear what all your thoughts and opinions and all these sequels are and how much money they might make and how they'll be received. A different one, it's been a longer form video as well. Then please subscribe down below hit the like button, you know, share this video with a friend. And also I'd like to give a massive shout out and a thank you to the official Waltoneer Club over on Patreon and all the Waltoneers over there who help support this channel. And also a special thank you to the Waltoneer Gold members that you can see here on the screen, along with Waltoneer Diamond member Kyle Mahan. And with all of that being said for today, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.